either take the Enigma or they take the Mag, right? Based on that Rubik yeah, band? Yeah, it must be. That's a pretty cool yeah, setup. Because Mag and Enigma, they sort of counter each other yeah. in a few ways, because you have BKB cancels for both of your initiations. And no, uh, I just love Mag Ember. I think this combination is busted right now. It is. I love Mag Ember. For sure, but at the same time, I love Enigma. I love what this hero does in the game. It doesn't even sure. matter if you if you don't get those good black holes. I think you bring more utility to your team. But at the same time, that Empower is pretty pretty damn neat with uh, Ember Spirit. It's just it allows you to go for this like more active build. Like you can get Ag's third item, and you mm. just still do so much damage. It's like a Maelstrom. That's all you really need. You can go for full utility, survivability, and still shred. It's very difficult for Enigma specifically to play around Ember. You can juke him out pretty easily. Yep. You, you're one of those poking carries. Love this choice, though. This is mm. what we saw yesterday, used yeah. by Vici Gaming as well. The Human Knight. Opens up so many heroes that are just damn broken. With how, how do we... I mean, we assume this will be the three Omni, right? Yeah. Unless something comes out that makes it a viable support. I love the seven support, so bad, but by the way. It feels unlikely, right? You already have the... Well, I mean, I guess there is still Bat, theoretically, but... We saw how much uh, Yang did yesterday on the, on the night from the position three. Yep. Can't wait to see what Gugu can do with that as well. Doesn't have to be, but most likely it, it should is. be. Yeah, I most think. likely. Right. I mean, yeah. Cuckoo on the Enigma should be. Or sorry, Cuckoo on the Omni and then Tim's on the Enigma. They ban out the OD. Nothing really too special there. That mid lane. You most likely want to have that Ember on the mid lane. No side lane shenanigans this time around. Man, they got a smile on his face. <laughs> Not quite. I imagine the silencer band could have been something they weren't intending. About that silencer, you're playing Omni Knight and Enigma. You want to ban that yeah. hero for sure. And silencer is pretty good. Remember yesterday we were talking to Arzik, and he said the same thing. But how can he not when Solo went 10-0 with silencer? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, there was a lot of plus twos that game. Yeah. Minus twos. Oh, sorry, I forgot we focused on the negatives here, around here, not the, not the positives. <laughs> Look, Very Canadians true. have one way of looking at the world. <laughs> it's often looking on the brighter side of things. Us realists. Trap feels like it's like slowed down a little from the earlier one, doesn't it? I don't it's know. The second it's... phase bands, man. You're not yeah. supposed to even talk about the draft during this phase. This oh. is where you just... Hang out. Have oh, fun. No, 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 no. oh, okay, cool. This awesome. is always so the time in a draft where someone says, well, this is where you choose which direction <laughs> you're going to go because this is banned into pick. Yeah. Is this what the host life is like? She has all these different panelists go up to you and goes, they're all the same. They just say the same thing. Ask me what on my panel. I don't care. They all say, oh, there's the one they yell at. There's the one with the numbers. And there's the one who doesn't speak English. Perfect. <laughs> I love hosting Dota 2. Oh, that's too accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true as well. well that's a new <clears throat> hero. That, that's true that's, as well. You really know what nice Kyle loves? Story. Damage amplification. That's true? How'd yeah. you know? I just... Well, you're a panelist. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's sick when you combo the aura, the minus armor, plus the mag. Plus, it's a black hole counter. Yeah, recently wow. we saw a pretty neat build on this Ember Spirit. That's the rush of a Desolator. Yep. With the Magnus be, and the Vengeful plus Dazzle. Be, Maybe it's an overkill, but that would be a lot of damage, yeah. And it allows a hero such as Slark to be in your team too. But I'm not certain if they're going to go for that, but... You don't Slark into Enigma. You don't Slark into Omni either. Yeah. Grimstroke, though, if you're TNC, you do Grimstroke quite, quite often and quite a lot. Uh, no real combos right now, I guess. There's Enigma, but... They, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. They're obviously going to pick some kind of melee carry. I think PA is quite nice here. In theory, Jug Lifestealer don't like playing against Venge and Mag because they have these BKB piercing abilities. Yeah. Whereas PA, you're just going to tank. You'll tank through the RP. You'll leap on top of the Venge, on top of the Mag. You can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ember Spirit. What about Storm, too? Like, I'm thinking these other Omni classics. Yeah. I just love Grimstroke PA. You, hit a, you have a timing with the uh, triple dagger oh, Grimstroke ult and just, yeah. It's not like huge because the yeah, Grimstroke daggers don't split, but still. I guess if you pick Storm on TNC, you are playing into Ember, right? Is that what you thought of? Yeah, uh, yeah. But still, could be all right. Uh, this is an FY mag, right? Or you think it'll be Chalice? 
I, I was, I don't know. I was kind of thinking the same thing. I, I kind of feel like it's going to be Chalice, Dude, but it, I don't know. They what if they went decision. Underlord? Underlord's actually pretty insane against Omni and, uh, and Enigma. There's not a lot of heroes that can lane versus Omni in a pure 1v1. That, that gives you aggro potential. Um, if, they, if this was Ember mid, uh, but then you'd have a, a ma an aggro lane with a Magnus, which isn't going to happen. So if this is support mag, they're already locked into not aggroing. Which means they're probably not going to ha have the 1v1. Yeah, one of the weakest points of Magnus is the fact that he doesn't really deliver a whole lot in the laning stage. A few skewers here and there, but that's about it. Yeah. I agree. I'd, if they could get a... Because you know you're against Enigma Omni. It's going to be annoying, but your Ember should be able to free farm. Especially with the assistance of an FY mag. So right. you'd like to be able to apply pressure into the offlane to ensure two heroes stay down there. Maybe something like a Necrophos? Mm. That helps with like the laning setup too, theoretically. I mean, for now, they should just be picking either the support of their offlane, right? Yeah. So, or is that what you meant? Like a Chalice Necro? Yeah. Oh, they go with the King. Dang. Okay. Oh, so, it is indeed the Chalice. Tusk. Yeah, the Chalice Magnus. We do not get a lot of core mags anymore. But no. I feel like China likes it more than the other regions. I think they're more into the, the core Magnus. Yeah. And also, it's I more guess damage Sam. amp for the, the way, tag we, team. We talked yeah. about Vengeful and how she amps up Magnus and uh, Ember, Sp Ember Spirit, that is. Uh, the main reason also they pick this Vengeful is the swap. As Enigma, you can't itemize versus Vengeful. Uh, with the multiple swap charges right yeah. now, your BKB or Lincolns, they don't matter. So, yeah. And there's the Snowball save. Doesn't work versus Black Hole, but can still help people out of sticky situations around a Grimstroke. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's definitely... You need some sort of mobile hero. I, I wouldn't mind Slark for yeah, TNC, Slark actually. Is this still is all right. insane, yeah. Slark game. Grimstroke plus Slark Especially are decent core in the lane too, as well. Right? Yeah. He can't lane. They go with something even like simpler, the Juggernaut. Mm. Juggernaut, Grimstroke, you have the spin and the ink swell on the lane. It's pretty decent. I guess you don't like it versus the Ember, but it's fine. It's, it's okay versus it. I just, I feel like uh, Slark gives you like a win condition where at any moment, if you can pack off an RP, you know, you, you get to a point where Slark can just win you the game. Jug doesn't have that same effect. He is an Omni though, if the Omni doesn't get RP'd. True. I think uh, when you have this Jug on mid, you can give Armal something more flashier, something that can win you the game, create a lot of space. You think that's um, Storm? They ban the neck of themselves on PSGLGD because it just it kind of oh, crushes, crushes Ember the, the Ember, phase. Yeah. yeah. This uh, lineup for TNC is very similar to one that they had against RNG, where they had Armel play Kunka instead. Very oh. active and aggressive hero. I wouldn't Some mind catch. a Kunka here. Mm. Because you already have the tower pressure, you just need a bit of team fight, and you want to have that catch. I think that TNC yeah. play best when they have the ability to fight, but more importantly, find more kills. Yeah, keep the fight going. Get yeah. the, the and more ones, stuns, right? The disruptor catch. Dota kind of deal. Like, I mean, RML, I always think of like SF and stuff, but I, I agree. I think they need more control, yeah. not just like auras and Does like play push monkey? as a unit. Does he play one? Monkey King. This is not a monkey game, though. He has not yet played Monkey King this tournament. He's played uh, a DK. Alina. DK would be, I, I think DK wouldn't be yeah. bad either. I like Hunka DK. I think that's the hero archetype that they need to be going for here. So it's, pretty much want something up front, tanky, some catch from them. Yep. It's all right. They, are, they do not have a lot of stuns. Inkswell and the Black Hole is pretty much it. And they've been the PA, the PA themselves. PA. I mean, that's not surprising. Mag, the Mag PA, yeah. Ember. Yeah. <laughs> so Storm, Kunkka, DK. Yep. I think Storm's still pickable for sure. Just to be able to, I mean, you're up a game. Depends how confident you're feeling. If you're really feeling it today and helped up by an Omni, it's playable. Well, there's only 10 seconds left. I mean, they get Alchemist too. It's, I guess, that same style, but I just don't know if it's necessary. Kunkka. It's Kunkka. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. The drafts don't lie. If only we were as good at predicting the winner. <laughs> Wouldn't that help? Yeah. That'd be boring, though. True. Yeah, you know, we, we like to leave up a little bit of excitement That's for right. our viewers. If we just told them who was going to win, because we actually know. True. I mean, this is like wrestling. With the experts. It's about yeah. making the show better, you know, not mm -hmm. making us sound right. It's making them that. feel better, because we're such fools. Yeah. Anyone could be an animal. You are the kings, you and we are but the jesters. <laughs> Accurate description. So you're saying we're fools in Sheevers court, then? Yes. Queen okay. Sheaves. Queen Sheaves. I like it. Let's go. Uh, All right. What? Are we sending Ember mid? We're fine with this? Ember versus Kunkka? I think, I think you do. It's a you don't punish matchup. a Kunkka mid, right? So mm, yeah. might as well just get away with whatever yeah, you yeah, can. You pick, you pick your Ama hero here. Who actually... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could see him picking a Slark for himself. Ama TV. A fan. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't mind a Terrorblade. It's not the ideal game for it, but... 
So yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you just pick slot. Even into Enigma, yeah. it's so good against Jug, Kunkka, Omni, and it ensures that PSG LGD at a certain point just win the game. And what did, what did he end that last game on? It was like 15-0 and 0 or something. Yeah. It was around. There was double digits. I, uh... I already know where I'm going, but I'm not going to go first this time because I, I led my panelists <laughs> Did you go first? to straight no, off he, he... And that's very annoying because you can't get it off, obviously. But besides that, it's just really the Kunkka and the Grimstroke abilities. Grimstrokes are very telegraphed, so you can Dark Pact it off. You have to just watch out for the bug, of course, because you have to kill it off for yourself. Dark Pact doesn't matter. But you attack very fast, so that'll be the case. And looks like they're going to actually smoke, try to get the Reeze on the lanes level one as Sebs are spammed. They are spammed and PSG LGD ready to move. And we are hoping, of course, Sheever. Of course, we're hoping for a game three. I see. Game one was obviously a great showing for TNC, but definitely not PSG LGD at their best. They they faulted. They could not make the draft operate after the second half. Continued of the game. This time round, we'll see if they're able to keep it closer to TNC, which is not. Well, going to be easy if TNC continue to play at this ever-increasing level that they've been reaching with their performance. And it is cool to see also that it is Chalice on the mag, right? It's a bit of a difference. We don't see offlane mag by almost anyone except for Seb, right? I think he's probably the only one. I think maybe we've seen one or two maybe out of Pasha. Yeah, back in the day, I thought. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, like, recently, recently. My recently, control used to though. also play it a couple of times, but yeah, I mean, like, recently... No, it's not a common occurrence. Yeah, not too many offlane... offlane Magnuses. And that's, that you know, see. always happy to see that, because that's going to mean more levels, more items, and more chances for the big RPs, rather than just being that old empower machine. Absolutely. And let's see, so mid lane, of course, arm out on that fifth pick, Kunker. A hero that he is incredibly comfortable with. So many games on the Kunkka in Armel across the world as he's traveled and played the Dota 2. Let's see how he does. It's maybe Zamba Spirit. We will see indeed. It's a fun matchup. There's kill potential. Did suffer, of course, in the lane in that first game, giving up first blood against maybe in a solo situation. Yep. This time around, a little, little less likely to happen. He's going to have that beef as the Kunkka. That yeah. tie bring a spam can sort of pressure maybe keep maybe low on the HP as well. LGD does not want to get behind it all on this side of this early early flame learning phase because they're versus Enigma. That's kind of the rule of thumb. You're versus Enigma. You can't start you can't start giving up kills. You can't start making mistakes inside your laning phase because then the Enigma is just free farming during all that downtime. So we are going to see a lot of aggression coming out from LGD. I'd imagine from in particular. FY on that tusk. He can definitely look to make aggressive moves on that mid lane with the Ember Spirit who. We should probably see maybe keeping that Kunkka relatively low, but we will see Armel always be bringing in tons of regen, Xing himself yeah. the base if he needs to. There's a lot of ways to play around. Oh, for sure. He's going to almost certainly get those early stats as yeah. well. There's braces online, so he's just this sort of 1K beefy boy in the middle that's very hard to sort of force out. Yeah. The side lane, so look at the situation. This is pretty much the matchups TNC wants, right? They're happy with this, getting Cuckoo solo against Chalice and having Gabby's Jug farm aggressively against the Slark. Yep. It does seem like that is the situation that they want. I don't think Chalice is too unhappy being versus this Omni Knight down bottom, though. This Magnus does just fine in that matchup. You have such high base damage advantage over the Omni. You keep bullying him, so... No, TNC might have the lanes that they wanted, but I don't think PSG LGD is very upset about this at all. Okay. They can even look to get these kills top immediately. Okay. They try to set this up onto AU. He does have to use the Inks well defensively. A little worried about getting jumped on even further. Will back away. Farm at the moment between the two carries, are mate? See, sitting on seven for three, Gabby five for zero. So still having the three of them here. They are able to secure that better time as expected when you're against a team that is running the Enigma in the jungle. Mm -hmm. You are going to have the stronger lane somewhat. And at the moment, it is this top one, getting Arme that free farm. Getting free farm, but there are a couple range creeps that have been denied. I see Tim's just denied another one out of that lane too. So he's getting good farm, but there is going to be that reduction that always does come out as well. Yeah, that's uh, specifically the slowdown in the levels. Obviously, the, the more time that he's going to be vulnerable without that level six. And as well, get to the point where Tim's will therefore be able to move out of the jungle and maybe look to put some pressure with the rest of his team on that top lane. Maybe try and force an early tower, or at least look to try and run down some of the supports. Yeah. I love how much fun these teams are having with each other, though. Just like the, the chat wheels back and forth. As soon as one team uses one, they're like, oh, our chat wheel's back up. That's right. Got to use it back as well. Lots of Lots of fun. Lots of battling should be happening. 
very soon up here. And they're going to look to go for this now immediately up top. They hit the level twos. The Tusk is level two. Venge as well. So the setups are there. They can definitely look for it, but they have to be a little careful. They can still die to the potential of the Jug and the Grimstroke, in particular the Vengeful Spirit. FY probably more than safe. He's holding out the skill point, deciding if he needs the Snowball to save somebody or if they can get the shards to make an aggressive play or either one. See middle lane. Armel versus maybe. Continue to be very close. 19 for three against the 17 for one. Both mids getting the farm that they hope for. And the bottom lane farm remains to be very even. Ooh. FY, we see him on the mini-map there. He's following AU. He has boots finished up too. He's just keeping tabs on this Grimstroke, just making sure that maybe knows if he's getting set up on it. Maybe he is getting set up on. There are TPs to help. They're going to turn their attention towards AU. AU has got the ink squirrel, but will be dodged straight away by the Snowball. Malefis is out onto FY, but there's the slide of fist. Maybe he's going to be the one to clean up that first blood as he comes across and gains that gold bounty. No funny business there by PSG LGD. Just bringing that extra hero immediately, just knowing that they want to get that return code. They cannot give anything up in that early game, as we were talking about because of that Enigma. And we're seeing it. Look at these last hits. Gabby only has seven. He's being slowed down incredibly hard. It's four and a half minutes in. Uh, he's not having a great time at all up there. No, not at all. Ame, gonna put some harassment. TNC, they've got to sort of hope that Tim's is going to be able to make the magic happen. You know, at the moment he's he's doing what Gabby can't. He's able to farm, but it is leaving this top lane at this weakness where Gabby's getting pressured. Bounty runes. Looks like maybe he's actually making the move bottom to try to set that one up. And they might even be able to set up for Cuckoo. He is low. He's got it's... the Heavenly Grace. Yeah, they're just going to be dissuaded. But they got the runes. So it looks like a three for one for PSG LGD, and they will fill up their bottles. Now, how do they sort of get the Gabby back in? How do they, they find a farm? Is it, is it best to keep the laning situation as is, or could you expect to see them want to swap Gabby maybe down towards the bottom where they may have a better chance of actually securing him that farm? I actually thought they would do that right there. Yeah. I didn't think that he'd come back up here after all this, because now it's he's even in threat of like dying if he steps up too far. Sure, he has the spin always to protect himself, but you're going to have to be using these defensively. This time, there's a snowball again to dodge it. So that's yeah. why I always will be covered up those, but now the nuke. I do get the slow, Gabby. Has to be careful to see if he wants to commit with the Blade Furies. It will leave him invulnerable. It's tempting, but he's, he's holding back on it. Doesn't want to go in too deep. As knows that any time he does and say he doesn't quite get the kill, there will be that turnaround between the three of them on LGD. Now, Tim's at least remaining in the area. Making sure that Gabby can have a grab at the creep wave. Yeah, I guess that's the approach. Instead of moving him toward bottom where he'll suffer versus a Magnus, of course, in the 1v1, they're just going to bring a full tri lane up here and just try to pressure the tower on that five minute mark. Eidolons split. So they will be able to deal a good amount of damage on that one there. And there's a rotation as well. Armel, he's six. He's got a haste. He wants to make something happen up here. He sees FY. Does initially try and see if he can get maybe a bigger core behind him, but he'll now turn for the quick combo. A little beefy on the Tusk, and not necessarily an easy kill. Starting to get out the tiebringer hits. He knows he has to bring it back there with the X, otherwise FY snowballs to the neutral camp there. So can't actually go for the bow play onto the Tusk. Giving some time now for maybe to push out that mid lane, but maybe he actually looks like he wants to react. They're losing this tower very quickly. It's a very important move here for TNC. To rectify the lane that the core was struggling to farm in, they're now on the verge of taking the tower. Snowball comes out to dodge the initial Blade Fury from Gabby and will actually roll away. So TNC not under the threat of being chased away. PSG LGD will be able to secure the tower tonight. And it's a very early time though to lose that top tower. Tim's able to put the pressure on. LGD make the best out of the situation by making sure that the maximum amount of gold doesn't go over to TNC. But it's certainly still map control that TNC have gained. They got to find a place for Gabby though. Yeah. That's the most important thing. He's level four, starting to hit a neutral camp. Ooh, the Blade Fury. It wasn't quite back up in time to dodge the magic missile. Now it's there. Should be enough to get him away. Let the shards, the shards. FY, blocking him in. They still have to keep the distance away from the Inkswell stun. As X Nova. He can't get in range. Why not the magic missile back in time? Gabby is able to escape. But 18 last hits. He's down on the bottom there. Bottom four net worth as a jug. Usually one of those heroes that you want to start really well early because. You're not really the strongest if you get behind. Your Omni Slash, everything is pretty weak there. You've got to be careful moving around this mid lane as well. Arm out. There's four heroes 
heading in towards this mid lane from PSG LGD. They want to try and make a go onto the Kunkka. It's not easy. It's got the two braces, the boat ready to go. DD on the Ember Spirit, though. DD. See how far Mel walks forward, FY. Level 4 empowered He's as well. He's going to lead in Wave of Terrors out on our power. He's got the boat coming out, so will have that damage resistance. Have they got enough to fight through it? RP committed as well by Chalice. Gets the two of them. Jump forward with the remnants, but Armel, he's still alive. Walking it off. He's too tanky. Getting the boat off in time, allowing him to walk off. They will lose AU. FY still trying to chase. He's on the mana front. Incredibly long. There's no shrine. Armel has to be has to try to duke this one now. He can't be seen. See if FY is going to be able to get if he's able to throw one spell out. But he's gone the Ooh. wrong way. Armel able to just walk straight in a line. And FY won't be able to catch him out. He gets away. TP back to base. They only have the two points in the slide at the moment. They went for the max points into that flame guard onto maybe there. So he doesn't have that continuous spam there. He still gets them getting them a kill, but. It's actually going to move one. around down to the bottom lane. See if they can have a go on to Cuckoo. Cuckoo, also a pretty hard target to go for as the Omni Knight. They go for a bit of a poke, but indeed Cuckoo able to easily step back as the Omni. You see those high levels as well on both him and Armel. Level 8. Elsewhere, though, Gabby struggling. He's starting to find a little bit of space, but he needs a whole lot more. He's so far behind Ame. Ame is going to be near double his net worth soon on this Slark. Not a place you want to be at all on a Juggernaut. And a slark at the top, it is It is terrifying, this game. We already talked oh, yeah. about the strength of this hero. When you look at it against TNC's draft, a lot of opportunities for Arme to just get in and out of the fights. And if even when he's not instantly taking people out because of the defensive measures that TNC have, he'll have a lot of chances to just rack up that essence shift. Yeah, he's got really good targets hit. The Omni and the Kunkka, two of the dream targets that you can go on as a Slark just to get those stacks built up. And he's going to have damage amplification. Kyle loves it, right? But if he does have it, he has both the Empower and he has the Venge. He's starting to farm up some stacks here on the Slark to boost that momentum to get that Echo Saber early so he can make those aggressive plays. That's going to take him up too a lot. So there might be some decent amount of burst damage that comes out from TNC. If he's got all these stats on a Slark, could definitely prove to be quite an issue. We saw there with the, the stats as well. You know, great appreciation for what Xnova has been doing. He's, he's stacking five camps already at the 10-minute mark. That yeah. makes all the difference for pushing Arme that little bit further ahead. I mean, there's no reason not to do it. As, as yeah. heroes like Venge and stuff like that as support, you get so much gold back from just doing these stacks. When your carries go farm them, you're getting a lot out of it. And you're getting your levels when you're making, making moves elsewhere anyway. And up Gabby. top, now look to Gabby. He's got the Blade Fury, it goes for the TP out. Uh, they've got the swap, ready to cancel it. As Gabby, the Blade Fury ends, and so does his life. Can't get that one off when you're versus Avenge as well. Even a Magnus too in this game, and a Tusk. They've got so many different ways that they can actually stop that spin TP. Yeah. Not level 6 yet on FY, but... And it was those little things, you know, Xnova being able to create those stacks and sort of hang around a little bit means that he has that 6 for that play. Makes all the difference and catches Gabby. It's three to zero, not a huge amount of kills and farm still overall. Incredibly even between the two teams. The biggest problem at the moment for TNC is that Gabby needs to catch up. Yeah, Tim's obviously has the farm where Gabby doesn't. But how much can they do with this Enigma at this point in the game? Yeah, all that downtime. Sure, they've got Enigma farming, but you're playing versus an Magnus. You know that there's a Magnus empowering not only one core in this game, it's two. He's doing it both on that Slark as well as that Ember Spirit, just keeping them boosted forward. Chalice bottom. Easy combo here from Armel and into the Inkswell stun. Very it's nice. an easy catch. The Kunkka Grimstroke combo. You get that X mark, it's a lot of disable very early on in the game. Mid lane FY. Malefist comes out from Tim's. Cuckoo TP's in as well, tries to chase him down, but FY, it's already far enough away. They can start to put a bit of pressure onto this mid tower. Fortification will be used, but TNC, they will be answered to by maybe. Leads in with the Ember Spirit. Xnova's here as well, has got swap available, but TNC's already out of there. They're really prioritizing defending these tier ones now. After they lost that top one so early on, they really don't want to lose control of these early tier ones because they need to be able to farm their jungle. They have a Magnus, they have to be able to sit back and farm it up. So they have to protect these tier ones as much as possible early on. And there they're going to continue to just farm it up. Ame continue to push out bottom, full Echo Saber finished. And maybe just constantly running near Chalice to get empowered. We've seen Armel being able to sort of move around, make moves on other heroes, but making a move onto the Slark is, is going to be something that he's not quite looked to do yet. And even when he does, it, it's not going to be easy. There's going to be more than enough chance for Arme to, to keep himself alive. 
It is thankful that they do have that one such, that one lockdown that is, well, the two type of lockdowns on their team on TNC that works really well versus Slark, right? The X can't get rid of that one and the Black Hole. So if they are able to get those off, sure, they can maybe look to punish Ami, but there's always defensive capabilities. X Nova, the swap. The swap, yeah, these swaps, you can already feel it. Now, X Nova's game has been incredible yep. on a lot of these plays on the main stage here at LGD in this one. He's, it's his, you know, it's his chance to shine. The saves will be there. The black hole stopping will be there. You can trust Exnova to bring those plays out. Yeah, and you can see how content at the moment PSG LGD. I mean, it's one to three in this game. It's one of the lowest scoring games I think we've had at this tournament. But look how content they are with just sitting back. They're just stacking more and more camps, throwing out those empowers, getting that farm. But TNC are still doing a pretty good job of keeping that net worth, like you said, in their lead. Not even. Not even yet. And Gabby's caught up, pretty much. Almost a drum, phase drum, finished up. Not too bad. Still not not anywhere near the two main cores of PSG LGD, but he's on his way. Tim's has, has got the mech done, so... PSG LGD are to look for fights. Yeah, I'm wondering he's, what... He's going to be able to turn up and, and turn things around, but I, th I think, as you said, the biggest problem is for, for TNC is that PSG LGD aren't necessarily going to be looking for those fights. Yeah. They're, they're keeping it chill, hitting the neutrals. I'm wondering if Cuckoo's going to buy as well. Because he's very farmed 6,400 net worth, right? But I clicked on him before, and he's, he's just got 2,700 gold. He's just banked up Arcane Boots, Solar Embracer. And you see, PSGLGD, there's a line that they have not been crossing in the last few moments. That river. Right now, they're in the river, but they don't want to cross it. They just have to defend their jungle for the time being and farm. It's nice top. top, though. For the RP, looking down Gabby. Gabby does have an Omni Slash. Will he be able to get it out in time? He does. In comes the save. Cuckoo with a heal, and with that Omni Slash, they'll pick up one kill. Chalice will be able to TP out. A very fortunate turnaround there for TNC. Gabby nearly dying. Able to get, I believe, the wand into the Omni Slash to keep himself alive. Able to fight back. And these little kills, they're going to help continue to climb him back into the game after a very rough laning stage. Mm -hmm. And all this space that's being made, Armel 3,100 gold. That relic's coming in pretty soon for the Kunkka. I wonder if Cuckoo's actually just going to buy a full Aghanims, uh, right? He's versus it's, the Magnus. It's, it's a really great this item game. this game. I'm wondering if it could be one of those possibilities, because then he doesn't have to stay near the fight for to deal with that RP, or even to deal with like, a lot of the slight spam. He can just use it, and he just buys that shit full Crimson Guard, as I'm saying it. Okay. That's also pretty good. But that's where well, anytime you see someone sort of save that money, he's definitely considering all his options. And yeah, that's, I was very curious to see what it was going to be as. And Len Armel, the drag back on to FY Gabby, surrounding the two of them. X Nova will swap FY back out. And actually, that was X Nova to walk off as well. So with that swap, everybody's kept safe on LGD. So Obime will be thrown out to Chalice, but nobody close by his side. Slight change oh combo from maybe catches out the two of them, but AU getting healed up by Cuckoo. GA's out as well. They're trying to turn towards Chalice. Blade Fury's out. Chalice being brought down low. Tiebreaker hit from Armel. They've claimed two. They're now looking towards Arme. Arme's had to pop the Shadow Dance and run. As TNC able to turn and fight there. Big turnaround potential. The use of the mech, the GA, they have this sustain that makes it at this point of the game, very early on, 16 minutes in, very hard for PSG LGD to sort of outlive them in the team fights. And now there's a full Crimson Guard too for the Omni Knight, so that's probably the better choice here in this game than going for an Axe, is then you have to play around your ulti every time, right? Has a long cooldown still, so sure, Axe is great, but having to rely on it so long isn't really the greatest. Crimson, only 46 seconds, so he's gonna be able to have that frequency, and yeah, we saw it, that turnaround. They are still very tanky on the side of TNC. Yes, LGD has to be careful how they make those aggressive plays. Let's see. They're backing off arm out. I'll say you to get self back to base, refuel, get back in. FY is on top of him. Huge burst for the slider fist. There you're trying to get away the Crimson Guard, keeping him safe. Mechs popped as well. There's the swap and the combo, the X mark grab onto FY, but he gets the snowball dodge out. FY still alive for now. Now starts to walk away. The black hole on the back line, stopping him off, but X Nova will cancel it. RP's out onto the two of the front chalice. They're looking towards Cuckoo. Cuckoo and Tim's falling low. Tim's is down. But they've already lost Arme. And now with the X mark drag back, Armel can try and find more. He's on top of Chalice. Chalice trying to run away. X Nova with the magic missile. Holds back Armel. Can't quite finish up Chalice, he can turn, try for the tiebreaker, but he's already dead. PSG LGD will kill him off in time. And now maybe ready to chase for more. Cuckoo goes for the TP out. He will manage to get himself out to safety. The Omni Slash comes out from Gabby, but they group up, they surround him. Gabby's trying to run, but four hungry members of PSG LGD looking for blood. And they'll surround Gabby, punch him up, FY, and they'll take him down as well. As they hold the fight on that top lane, TNC trying to force something. Arme does have to buy back for that, but that little lead that TNC just began to build up has now been lost.
Yeah, they're very tanky. They get their ultis out, but that buyback comes out and they overextend just a little bit too much. Their, their ultis were expended. They'd use the rum. They'd use the Enigma ult. They used pretty much everything to bring down these heroes and isolate Amage for them to bring him down once. But that second time, they did not have anything left available for themselves. And this, and this Amber Spirit, sure, they got Ame, but maybe got, I don't even know how many Sleight of Fists off in the fight, maybe 12 plus Sleight of Fists, and now he's approaching a Desolator on top two. Top, arm out. They're on top of them, Ame gets the boat out, but there's a Magic Missile, they have the control, Ame gets the stats, he gets the kill. That's a big mistake there for TNC. They're losing Armel in that situation. Out entirely on his own on that top lane. Nobody else around. So Ame and maybe continue to hold the top of that net worth. These two cores getting bigger and bigger. Ame has now got the 20% lifesteal talent, so can even more just rely on being able to stand and hit these beefy heroes, but staying alive and just getting to insane amounts of Agi. Yeah, and he's going for the safe play too. He's queued up the BKB just to not be able to deal with just, all that. Just needs to stay alive. Just yeah. needs to be able to hit people. Just needs to be able to hit people and just needs to not be able to get controlled and brought down by the X marks the spot into trapping him into some weird corner like he got stuck in, in the last situation. Grief's done for Tim's. Still that timing for Armel that got slowed down by the death, that radiance that they're waiting for. It's not quite there. Need it before they take for the next fight. The next fight may happen soon. Coming up to the 20-minute bounty runes. PSG have they have the blink dagger on the Magnus, so they could be ready to fight this one. But they're all completely split up at the moment here, so it doesn't look like they actually want to take the fight. I guess just waiting. Ame is probably like, hey, I'm close to BKB. I just use my buyback. Let's wait for my BKB to come out, and then we can look for a fight. Even finding a DD now on the Sark. So DD BKB coming out. This could be a timing here for PSG LGD. However, TNC they do have that radiance about to come out also for Armel. Yeah, just about this ancient camp away from it. Should have it. Looks like he will be able to find it before anything else kicks off as SGLGD elsewhere at the moment. Three of them down bottom, starting to put some pressure on towards the tier two tower. And there's the pickup. Certainly how make the difference, but once that BKB is done for Arme, and there it is, just as the Radiance is picked up. So Arme getting that BKB at the perfect time. TNC is drawing the line that they want to be able to pressure this top. They have not seen that this BKB is purchased, though, on the Slark. This could catch them off guard. PSG LGD, they, they're probably suspecting something's going on here. They're hitting a Tier 2 bottom with an Ember Spirit, and there's no reaction just yet. They're starting to make moves. X Nova preparing, TPing to that Tier 3, so his teammates have quick TPs in the front. So the last fight, in fact, the black, black hole, hole is being straight up used. They've already got the disable on the back line straight away into the silence. They just find maybe Tim's no hesitation. And that's a big catch is now maybe, maybe forced to, to decide whether he wants to try and buy back if the rest of his team want to fight here. The tier two looks like they will just let it, they'll let it go. But Tim's just able to walk, he just, he just black holes him. No hesitation. I mean, he just, I just, he, he just catches him. Maybe TP's on the shrine and they have a ward and they're standing right in front of him. Yeah. So he's like, oh, okay, there's no Venge here. Well, he's hoping there's no Venge. The worst situation there is if like, a smoke happens and they get wrapped on, but they seem to have a very good read of what was going on right there. I we saw, you know, maybe make some mistakes in game one. It's a costly one. Uh, indeed, they've got to be careful. Maybe your own shrine, but you have to be prepared, especially when you see that sort of push coming in the top lane. Yeah, you know that the Enigma's going to be around. Yeah, and it's caused him to switch his item build. He had the Desolator queued up, Desolator queued up. He dies, buys an Ogre Club, going for BKB now on the Ember Spirit, feeling a little bit more pressured. And we are seeing Cuckoo, of course. Gets a couple of different small items in between, but will queue up that Aghanims eventually to deal with that Magnus. It's, I mean, the it's Aghanims so on Omni is so ridiculous. Yeah. It's there's so much healing, it makes you not have to worry about your positioning. It also pushes all your lanes out. Always able to protect your team versus that RP no matter where you are. As the farm will continue, six to eight. Still pretty quiet game in terms of those kills. A very close one as well. Yeah. Lots of last Which hits is, though. You know, and, and that's, it's impressive for TNC that it's close considering that they're against a team that has an empowered Slark and an empowered Ember. I mean, of course, an empowered Mag as well. Chalice being the core, he's picking up farm too but they're still keeping the farm level. Yeah, absolutely. Tim's is definitely carrying the weight of, you know, the pressure that gets put on you as an Enigma, where, all right, guys, we might have some trouble in the laning phase, but we've got this Enigma in the back lines. Tim's is doing a great job of that. 
And in sort of this slow-paced game, it's, it is the dream for an Enigma. Most of the time, fights are happening. Black Hole's back online. He's got about 50 seconds for it now. We'll see if PSG do you want to try and fight around the timing in mind of that. They do smoke up, so they want to try and do something whilst that Black Hole's not there. They've yeah. been unable to really find that timing before now, but with the BKBs, they're good to go. They've the jump forward, Armel, he's got the X mark out, so we'll be able to drag himself back, but there's the potential dive from Maybe. He's gonna jump straight in. He's looking to go deeper with the BKB. He's committing the remnant. He's on top of Maybe. They'll find one with the soft ones out. Armel's still alive. He's turning in the Tiberi house. Finally, they'll finish him off. There'll be a buyback from AU. No buyback available from Armel. He is dead for 50. Cuckoo caught on the front lines. He's gonna be turned towards by FY. They're trying to head in another chain. Holds back both Gabby and AU. He'll remove it with the Blade Fury. They'll now look to jump in. RP Ooh. down onto the one of them and kills off AU. That's a die back on the Grimstroke. PSG LGD keeping the pressure up high. Jump in with the Magic Missile. F5 goes in with a snowball onto Cuckoo, but Cuckoo, he's so tanky. They can't quite do anything about the Omni Knight. They'll head back, focus on the objective, get the Tier 1 tower. Still have a bit of a tickle at the two of them, but it's, it is hard to go for more with their PSG LGD. I think they'll just accept what they got there. Opening up that mid lane a bit more, getting that beginning of a lead in net worth. And being able to kill, kill the Kunkka. Not an easy hero to take down, they do it this time. And as a bonus, taking AU out twice. And the TNC might actually feel a little bit lucky they didn't have anybody else get caught inside that RP. It was very close to them potentially losing another hero. They only get AU caught in it, but this game is That's... looking really hard for the Grimstroke. Look sure. at the double BKBs, like Slark, Ember Spirit, they just what go into do? the back lines. Yeah. How, do you play, how do you play your hero? You have to just hope for he's, somebody to try to help I mean, you. He's got to get some ghosts or glimmers or something to just sort of keep him away from them all. Or Cuckoo just defending him somehow, right? Just the Omni Knight trying to protect that Grim, but definitely looking to be quite oh, difficult as Slark will build up some stacks here. He jumps out of the Shadow Blade. He's starting to build up the Agi. TNC could use to look this timing, though. The Roche is up, RP hole. was used, and indeed, they have hold, they have GA. Yeah, they definitely should look to try to take some advantage here. I believe Tim's also really close to a Blink Dagger. Just one of those other big timings. They're looking like they actually want to just take the this, fight This instead. could catch. Pierce LGD off guard. We'll see what sort of leader they can get. Chalice, he's been X Mark. Armel setting up the combo, but the Yules. He's just picked it up and he's able to keep himself out of the combo. Chalice outwitting TNC, and TNC won't quite find the grab. Immediate TP's up towards the top lane. They want to go for Arme. arme has got a BKB and a Shadow Dancer available here, but he still gets caught up by the initial drag back. He's holding on, knows that he doesn't need the BKB, relying on just the Shadow Blade to get away. That's the best sort of situation for Arme here, is he's still got those both big cooldowns to use as he wishes, and he doesn't need to. He's able to just sneak away in the shadows. He's out of there and takes a few Eidolons to go. Yes, LGD keeping that lead. Arme Slark looking as slippery as we expected. 2 1 and 5, that one death this game. And he's getting these levels very fast. Level 19 at this moment in time. Yeah, and these, it's just this double BKB timing. They got a good fight out of it. Now they've gotten a good amount of map control. Set TNC back. And now is where that empower, you're really starting to see the difference of it with that net worth increasing. A full Mjolnir near now pinked up for maybe. Tim's has got that blink. We've seen the importance of the black hole. It's allowed them to get these guaranteed kills on maybe. Still such in a hard sort of game. pickoff situations, but yeah, every yeah. team fight, you know that X Nova is going to be ready to put a stop to him. And obviously, with just the Greaves into the naked blink, no sort of BKB. There's other things that the rest of the team can do as well. Absolutely. He's either got to find the full five man, or he's got to find opportunities to use it when PSG LGD are split up across the map. He'll have a little bit of easier times once there's a BKB on Armel in particular, because then Armel can act as that just like, hey, they're hitting me, they're hitting me, they're hitting me, and then they start to make a mistake, and then he can try to get the jump. Right now, it's still a bit scary because they don't have anyone to bait him forward to get that. They don't have anyone else who can start the fight, anyone else who can initiate, really. Time for the smoke up from LGD. RP's available. They want to try and take a fight. They know that they're stronger at the moment. Yep, getting these item timings, like we are mentioning, the Mjolnir on that Ember Spirit. They also have Blink on Tusk. They've gotten a couple big items here for their for their side here to protect their cores. On a spot of action with the wave of terror, but TNC keeping themselves right back. A loop for the lead over the x mark but already maybe. He's just going straight towards the back lines, reveals himself, starts to poke in, jumps in looking for AU, and there you said That's it, the support is gone. Nothing AU can do to keep himself alive. BKB has been used by maybe. He's trying to chase for more. He's found Gabby in the trees. Gabby does have the healing ward out. Will now be cut down. There's the, the jump, Chalice, the blink, the RP, catches the two of them, but there's the counterplay. The torrent, the boat is out. Arme tries to commit Cuckoo, moving in with the GA, the Omnishad. 
Jesus, Tims, he's in! The Black Hole, but he gets cancelled immediately, the swap out! The Black Hole cancels there, but they've still lost FY on LGD. They'll go towards the tree line, x Mark catches out x Nova. They've found two, they're trying for Ame. Ame's committee has got a lot of message here stacked up. Moving in with the Shadow Dance, looking for Cuckoo. Cuckoo's trying to hide, he's healing up. The Dark Pack damage isn't quite enough, A heals out. Cuckoo's able to get away from there. Now the X is onto Ame, but Maybe Chalice is still around. He'll get the drag on, maybe he's back in, full health, full mana. Ready to keep the fight going. Big Cordon's happy news. They'll settle it for now. They'll back away. Such crazy fights. Tim's almost had a beautiful opportunity Opportunity there. As soon as the first swap came out, yep. he may have actually been able to jump and get the black hole right away because X Nova was in a pretty dangerous position. But X Nova, a quick four staff out, gets him into a spot to get that second swap. They're able to reset. And that's the beauty of LGD's lineup is the reset factor. As soon as the, that hold is used, as soon as the, RP, or the uh, Guardian Angel and the Rum is used, they back up, Slark heals up, Ember resets back to base, comes back, and that's where the fight becomes real hard for TNC. They have to be able to get these targets and bring them down in the instant go. Uh, he just has to keep right back. So hard for Otherwise, him. Otherwise, he's not going to get the chance to get a single spell out in these fights. They're eyeing up Gabby. I, I, and FY. He's got the lead in. Blade Fury's out. Jumping for Tins. Malefist. Swap back on to Gabby. Bringing him towards the rest of the team. But in fact, Gabby doing a lot with the Blade Fury on top of FY. FY's dead. They'll try and turn towards Arme, but Arme committing with a BKB. Heading in, looking to try and get the healing ward for the micro. Gabby keeps the healing ward away. Jumping from maybe on the back lines. He finds Tims. Who can look to come in for more with the BKB and the Miona. He can just keep hitting away at the ball. Cuckoo heals up Arme. Arme's allowed to back off of the chase. Magic Missile catches out the Omni Knight. They'll get a second LGD. The rest of TNC, they have to scatter. Escape this area. They will do so, the rest of them. It's too hard for TNC to protect their backline. Their backline keeps getting pierced onto every single time, either by the Slark or by maybe in these situations. And he brings them down so quickly. And these sort of kills and fights, the level's building up. He look towards maybe. He's very close to having the Agonim's gold. He's got good level, level 21. Yeah. That sort of terrifying point for the Ember Spirit. It's gonna get there. It's going to get there pretty soon, and now they're going for Roche. I mean, he's already been terrifying. I mean, 10 he has, he's 10-1-3, and three. he's 13 yeah. of the 14 kills for his team. This man's going crazy this game. 30 seconds until Black Hole. We'll see if they're able to push PSG LGD away from the pit. Long enough to buy time for that. They're trying to get in Chalice. RP. He's going to go for the RP on Gabby. Just make sure that Arme can finish up Roche, get the Aegis, and now they're ready to fight. Arme moves in with the BKB. They found Tims. Tims, he's in trouble. He's caught on the front lines. He's gone. No Enigma for 50 seconds. Chalice does die on the side. As Gabby, he's leading in, still has the Omni Slash to play with. The Magic Missile down upon him. And Searing Chain's not going to connect here for the moment from maybe, but Gabby's Save. still in. There's the controller from FY. Heads in with the Snowball. He'll now commit with the Omni Slash. He's doing quite a bit of damage, but not enough to kill him. Now they can turn. Another stun from X Nova. Blade Fury's back online on the side, maybe splitting the rest of the team away from him. But still, the GA comes out with the Axe, keeping Gabby safe. Arme's put the Shadow Dance, though. He's moving in, taking those essence shifts, getting that stats stolen up and built up on the Slark. He's ready to sneak in for more, maybe, with his Shadow Blade. He's thinking about it, but he won't go for it. He'll leave them behind, but still, another fight where PSG LGD are coming out on top in terms of numbers. Just look at that. You can just see the damage distribution. Just these two, these two elusive cores on the side of PSG LGD are just causing way too much trouble. Chalice does, like you said, he doesn't care if they're going to kill a target inside that RP. He's just making sure they can secure that Roche. Tims gets a bit out of position there on that left side. Gets quickly brought down. Well, that's the, the big ones coming out. Axe oh, for maybe. A butterfly, I believe, done for Arme. They're already getting in the back lines easier, not, uh, easily. Now it's going to be even easier for them to do so. And AU. One and seven on this Grimstroke, and it feels like it's just going to get harder and harder for him in this game. Still, TNC. They have the two tier two towers in mid and top. Of course, tier three yet to be taken down on the bottom. Their base is still in good condition despite being 9k behind a PSG LGD. It is going to be harder and harder for them to push up to the high ground. A fair bit of spam, good counter plays as well with the potential threat of the blink black hole. And obviously when it comes to high ground push, AU more likely to be able to sit back in a position where he is actually able to throw out spells with them being you know, unable to dive deep enough to get to him. Maybe. But as in, maybe has an maybe, agonims, yeah. yeah. Literal I guess maybe. he's in and out. He really is, <laughs> I guess you're right. He does not care where he needs to jump to on the map with the speed that he can with the axe. He goes wherever he wants. Yeah. 
I mean, he can jump back. He can literally just jump in the back line and almost kill the... Grimstroke only has like 1,200 sure. HP at the so moment. So the... like in one or two hits, a sleight of fist, and yep. then he just jumps out, and that's dead Grimstroke. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's a rough life for AU. Yep. It's our mate. Build up some stacks. Found Gabby. At the preparation for the fight, right? Just a couple hits on the jug, you know, make him spin away. Keep this map control going. They're keeping TNC inside of their base as they just continue this farm. And two minutes still to, to play with the Aegis on Arme. Yeah. Full map control now for PSG, LGD, TNC. In a lot of trouble, this one. And have a so strong performance from maybe. Yeah. Did have his struggles in game one. After a hot start this time, he's kept a cool for the whole way through. Only tripped up that once by Tim's black hole around his shrine. Other than that, a flawless game on the Ember Spirit. I'm sure that's a situation where it's like, Ex Nova, you're so good at warding, how come I don't see my shrine this time? But no, it's the one time that he does get caught out and he's having a pretty much flawless game on this Ember Spirit. Smoked out of the base. They are smoking still into this minute and a half left on Arme's Aegis. So they may not catch anything at all, though, as PSGLGD all around this area now will reveal themselves to two of them. They know Arme and Chalice are here. And then Lordy starts to back off. Gabby trying to find farm wherever he can. Even if it's in a risky position, he has to try to be able to push out here to get something on the map. Because they're not really farming much of anything. It's just continuing to increase for LGD. And Tim's will be able to get a ward down or a TP's back. That's actually pretty nice. That one is going to be pretty hard to deward. There is a Slark on the team, though. Oh, yeah, so, you know, I may, if he walks over there, he'll just be like, hey, wait a minute. But unlikely that the Slark will be able to, will go back on that side of the map anytime soon. Now looking for the fight here, LGD. They'll happily go for it, jump in. Onto AU once again, caught on the front. He has the Glimmer Cape behind him sometime. The Soul Bind's down onto the two of them, but the chains latches onto both. The Grease popped. Keeps them how healed up. AU is dead for 45. Once again, a fight they'll have to take away the Grimstroke. And maybe just diving in. X Mark will be there, but he has the BKB to rely on if he feels pressured and he'll pop it. Maybe jump in. The commitment with the RP. He's caught out the jug. Dragging him out as well. Gabby surrounded. The GA comes out. Healy was there as well as the save from Cuckoo. Gabby gets back up to the high ground. They'll keep him away. Out of harm's way. That is the RP committed. And but, only the Grimstroke falls. But also the GA is committed. The GA is super important in this game to protect anybody versus that Slark and that Ember Spirit. I think they're happy with that trading. That trade of going to get an RP trade for that. We look at Chalice. I believe Chalice pretty much has a refresher done if he chooses to buy it too. Gonna be close on the to Magnus. It. And he gets that skew range talent too. So we see him. He's able to bring people so far out of the base there if they do step up. And just continuing to grow that lead more and more. All the lanes pushing in. We see double Siege Wave, of course, pushing in now at that 35 minutes. So they can do. It's Gabby still feeling confident to farm out. At least knows when there's no RP, there's a little less warrior being grabbed out after the Blade Fury. Maybe sets up a remnant here, and he's picking up an Arcane Rune bottom. So Arcane Rune Ember Spirit coming up into this fight. So what they can do to Arme, bring him low. Get forced back, and of course, no Aegis, so it has to be a little careful. They'll now try and get it onto the back lines. Another route onto the two of them with his chain spam from maybe. Snowball is there as well from FY, dodging up the X-Mark combo. BKB is committed. They're straight in, jump forward from Army. Oh, Deirdre Tibbs! He gets the black hole! It buys the time for the first Tibbs! Oh my god, Tibbs! Oh my! Oh my god! I've never seen anything like I did it! He gets it off! They come straight into it! The full tips are out for Tim's! Where, where'd they go? They died oh, instantly! The Tim's boat, the combo! Tim's holding it down! Keeping his call! Behind the tier two, they dive! And it buys the time for the boat to come in! We gotta see this again! We gotta see this again and again! Look at this position! Tim's. X Nova's not in position for it! Look at this play, they're all committing, Tim's is in! He's, He's trying! So low, but the time that he buys with that black hole, it changes everything! And they were all stacked up, so I, it looks like X Nova, he may have tried to get it, but he's like, oh, I missed it! Buyback! They're dead for 70 on Arme! How long does he have? How much gold? 10 gold until Ten he has buy gold. buyback! Hey, it's counting down, he'll have it soon! 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Does he want to use it right away? They might want to try to catch somebody. He's holding on to it still. Oh my They're god. They're losing the Rex. Tim's. Cannot say his name enough. 
A game that really was slipping away for TNC. A game that it, it looked impossible to get off a game-changing black hole like that. And Tim's goes ahead and does it. Changes the potential fate of this whole game, this whole series. As TNC, they're taking another army. He's still not buying back. Using to buy back. He's lost two racks. There's no one to defend. RP. Got the RP. Chalice drags back the two of them. Gabby able to play, to play Fury away, and Armel still very beefy. Maybe he's committing. At well, least trying it with the BKB. X over. We'll be able to swap Armel away. The GA comes out. AU does fall. Kuku goes for the TP attempt, but the Yule Scepter will cancel it. Maybe jumps in. Focusing Armel. Armel. BKB tries for the CP, but there's the cancel. F flies in with the uppercut. Armel still almost certainly going to die. Just going to try and get as much damage out as he can before he does. And they will finally get him. Arme continues to chase down Kuku. As Kuku bashed up. This is a potential for a lot of stats to be built up by the slot. As Kuku is trapped with no escape. LGD. They will get another, but they lost the full set of racks. Myth, they lost the melee racks top as they make the executive decision to not buy back on the slug, but they take a lot of damage to the base because of that. Yeah, they're probably still feeling like they can take these fights anyway, because that'll happen just because of a dream black hole. So now they do have ways to cancel it still. They always will have that Venge double swap. Even if there is a Lincoln's finished up onto Tim's, there will be ways to stop it, but it will give a little bit of a hesitation. And if those situations happen again, yeah. where everyone's just stacked up on top of each other, it is sometimes hard to just get the click off. Like just clicking on the Enigma in between all that mass of everything. But now they will be able to set up for that Roche and they didn't, like you said, didn't have to waste the buyback or didn't have to use the buyback on the Slark. And he's still very strong. They are still in a very, very good position here in LGD, even if they lost these Raxes. But TNC made an impossible sim slight comeback here for they, now. They really have done. It's still, as you say, the lead, the holds there for BSG LGD, but it's certainly got a lot more rockier for them than that. Scary time, it's there again. I mean, as you said, we spent most of the game talking about how hard it is for Tim's to get those black holes out, but now you, you've got to respect them. He has it available. He's shown us that it can be done in this game. But we've also seen that they need that black hole. That is the scary thing, too. And now, look at PSG LGD. Got they're going to have double RP. They have the refresher on top of the cooldown being ready, and they're looking, they're looking to make something happen here. They've got a DD on their Ember Spirit, level 25, with a full Octarine, yeah, so those, very scary. Those double RPs, you got to watch out. A lot of plays, a lot of ways to sort of bait out a GA, then come in again after a GA, still unavailable for now. It's just all eyes on Tim's. X Nova is so prepared, level 18 now too, so he has the higher range swap. As Tim's, he's going to go in, he's going to lead it straight away with a black hole. He's controlling Army up, Army did the kill off the Aegis. The turtle was another, they found X Nova as well. Chalice commits with the first RP, Army's back for the second line, but Chalice stood up by the X-Worm. Double kill for Tim's, the man, the myth, the legend. And they're not done yet as they force PSG LGD away from the base. They've got to get out of there as the rest of them will run. But another play put to a stop by TNC's defense. X Nova, it seems like he didn't know the, the Lincolns was there. He went for the first swap, and then he's like, oh god, Lincolns wasn't able to actually was, get that save there. Yeah. And they get the beautiful follow-up silence and control onto Chalice. He's not actually able to get the refresher and second RP, and they saved their GA during all of that. They didn't actually have to pop it for Cuckoo. TNC making the impossible happen here. They really are. In a game where it really did did look very bleak for them. The, the sort of possible ways to play their ways out of this position that PSG LGD had them cornered in, but they are doing it. Still a 7K lead for PSG LGD, but they're, they are really starting to hit this brick wall. Every push put to a stop by TNC. TNC taking map control, taking objectives, taking the shrines. Gabby getting that farm now. as each and every black hole has caused massive issues for PSG LGD. Oh man, so scary. These fights are just so crazy about who gets these initiations and LGD, they're gonna have to find better ways to get information into those back lines. This, the team is just causing so many problems. They still have such strong team fight on PSG LGD though. Any type of these situations, you have to watch where you're standing because the team fights as we see can end in one abrupt moment. One combo from either side into a slide, into just, yeah. FY, watching for the Ags here. 
So he has that kick, way to sort of peel apart some of the, the feistier cores on the front lines, kick that jug away. If he's trying to lead it. Kick the Enigma away even. Kick the, yeah, indeed, if he sees Tim's coming, if he's able to get it off before the black hole cast is there. Could separate Tim's from the team, but Tim's. Refresher of, of course, the next time for him. 15 oh. seconds and black hole's there once more. Lots of ways for PSG LGD to bring people outside of the base now too, yeah. right? They have the skewer, they have the swap, and now they also have a snow uh, kick from the Tusk. So if they do see people standing out of position, they can like move their positioning pretty heavily. TNC positioning themselves here, smoked, waiting for some type of action to happen as they go for maybe that. Maybe if the Ember comes in with a remnant, they might look to jump this. They wanted to, but they're a little bit they're a little bit hesitant here. It's all about the jump from the smoke. Gabby leads in. Maybe he's going to head in. Down to spells the smoke. Gabby's no. They know where he's at. Chains will catch the two of them. Chains Tim's on Tim's. Has the back off. Greaves is pop. Maybe he's going to come in now with the BKB. Try and start the fight off, but it's going to wear out. It's not a long duration anymore. But now the BKB is gone. Ame will find the squishy. AU's gone out the back line of it all, but now the boat comes in. By maybe AU. They've got maybe. He's been outplayed. They go. Tim's is in. The black hole again. Gets the two of them. Shuts them down. Now the RP comes out with the G. He's here, ready to go for Cuckoo, as they can fight up for TSC, PSG, LGD, they have to scatter, they have to run, maybe, committing with his buyback, has the DD rune, but FY, left behind, Gabby on a killing spree, silent out on a baby, drag back, the torrent combo won't catch him, another remnant gets him back out of safety, he's still trying to poker them with this DD rune, another slight of fist and chains onto Armel, but they're without two heroes on LGD. Maybe having to commit a buyback as well, just to have the attempt at turning things around. But now the game is straight up even. There's no net worth advantage for PSG LGD. Oh a lineup with the Magnus, with the empowering, but it doesn't matter. TNC have closed the gap, and they just seem to have a much firmer hold on this game. You can see sort of the panic, the stress from the movements of PSG LGD. But TNC, they're just... They're just delivering play after play. Tim's every black hole. At this point, I, we haven't seen a bad one. No, we have not. We actually have not. And we also now see Armel picking up a Hex, and they're so quick on their follow-up, right? They get the black hole, instant Omni Slash, and they force LGD into a defensive perspective. And there's so many different ways that they can show. We were talking about how LGD, they want these fights to last long because they can build up all these stacks. But the fights are lasting incredibly long to the point where after they use their black hole, after they use all their sustain spells, after they use GA and Rum goes off, another boat comes back up. If yeah. the fight lasts 40 seconds, that they get a second ghost ship off. Unbelievable hold here by TNC. As they have now claimed an advantage in the game. And they've got themselves also perched in an aggressive position here too. Also, Tim's, Tim's pretty much like you said, full refreshers. If he wants to pick close. up a refresher, he can actually go for that too. It's getting that territory wherever you worry about the buyback goal. We'll see yep. what he favors. You know, if they do take a bad fight and Arme gets the Agi built up, they do have to be prepared to defend. We're starting to see this GA be the big problem though for the side of PSG LGD. They're trying to stick on targets after all these spells go off because a lot of them are surviving after it, but they can't do any damage. So we see the nullifiers queued up on both the Ember Spirit as well as the Slark. They need a way to get this GA off of targets so they can focus fire anybody. See if PSG LGD want to come out of the base. So they're going to hold the high ground. He's gone in, refresher. There for Tim's. He nearly has the ult naturally on court on Gabby. He's in on the front there. Are gonna have to use GA to keep Gabby safe, allowing to back off. X Nova able to swap him back up to the high ground. Chains come out onto him. FY throws the shards out, looking to block him off. But Gabby still able to retreat. The boat's out, Tim's. He's got the black hole. Now back on court, uh, back at available. And as I say, did not, I believe, have to use the refresher. So there is the double black hole threat. Yep. He went back to go pick it up. So they do have that threat there. He does not have buyback on the Enigma though. So if he does get caught out somehow, it's, it is. To really watch his positioning, especially right now while the GA is on cooldown. It's 100 seconds where we could see LGD try to make a move here. I sure, did. they used one RP, but they, they have did. a second. Yeah, they are, they are. Chalice is ready to go with that refresher, of course. BKB is trying to find next. Yeah, Tim's working with their refresher. As you say, lack of buyback. It's risky, but it really could be what breaks open this game for TNC to close it out. And if the black holes that he's been producing so far are anything to go by, you can absolutely understand 
why he goes full out on this purchase. He knows, he knows he can do it. Oh yeah. Two minutes, a long res respawn here for Roshan. Teams camping the ruins here. Zero spawn on it. They've got the hex reveal. Jump in. The two double minutes. Missile. Missile blend on these last combo. It's out. Oh my down. god. Gabby with the double kill. The soul bite again. Catches the two of them. Chalice is gone. And fly as well. Four dead. As TNC make a beautiful jump there from the high ground. The hex, the soul bite, abyssal combo. It was all there. And PSG LGD just get absolutely destroyed. FY blinks in to try to help his buddy, right? But he blinks in, the, the Soulbind attaches to him. So they both get a blistle, they can't do anything. They just get brought down because of it. They've got to oh use these buybacks. God. The range Rax is taken from the top lane. Three buybacks having to come out from PSG LGD to stop TNC from going for more in the base. Now a 7K lead for TNC. They're so prepared for this game, too. You see them camping the high ground, waiting for somebody to go for the rune as it spawns. No hesitation, they get the hex. And they all back up, playing themselves defensively, being a little bit careful here. They have everything available. Rich will be spawning soon. Once more again, that opening setup. The Soulbind on two, and that swap, as you say, setting up the second connection onto Chalice. Four kills. Easily taken in there. We've just seen it. A pickup from maybe. He's feeling it's desperate. The, it's the only way out. They need something huge. It's there. It could be what gets this game back in the hands of PSG LGD, a rapier. They just, I mean, they decided against nullifiers, both of them. They went all in. Slark buys a full abyssal as well. They're ready to just try to take the fights. They have to find Tim's. They've got no buybacks available on PSG LGD. One bad fight could spell the end for them in this game, in this series, and in this tournament. TNC seem to know where LGD is at the moment. They're pinging that mid lane. They saw those creeps go down. Ame um, picks up a haste rune. They're pinging it out instantly. TNC being very careful of their positioning. No area or space for mistakes to be made for LGD right now. Yep, we see the courier goes over for TNC. They go check out that Roche. They see that the Roche is up, guaranteed now. We'll see how sort of confident LGD feel in terms of trying to take a fight around the pit. As they, as I say, without buybacks, but on the other hand, TNC, they've got four ready, and even AU, he'll have his back up in a minute. Yep. DD Rune gets popped. This is where LGD, the PSG LGD, they're trying to get some type of fight here. They have to try to stop this Roche. Eyes on Tim's. Go for the jump in FY, he gets the kick off. Ooh. Boots him away. Gabby does get booted pretty far. But the snowball to dodge the Xbox, tries to force up the high gravity, but he gets forced back down. Maybe miscommunication there for Drew, but Chalice, he's able to find the setup, gets the RP. The second one. Up with the GA, it came out before the second one was there. So they cannot follow with the physical damage, and now Chalice gets a pistol blade down. Then without the Magnus, Tims has the control onto FY. They should set up a second, FY will still get the snowball out. Tims, post the refresher, he's got a second black hole ready for the bigger kills. It doesn't matter, maybe though, though they've already killed two. The there hole. the second black hole to close things up. Tims. This was his game, and he has done it. He really has. There's three dead. The Rapier hits the deck. Three heroes without buyback. 26k gold lead. Just go down that mid. It's time for them to take their victory. TNC, they've got it. GG GG. Gold. As TNC take game two, 2-0. Two beating LGD. That has to be one of the most explosive comebacks I've seen in quite a while. Tim's. Oh my god, Tim's. LGD have to be pretty upset with themselves.